broken spirits and a contrite heart you will not A broken spirit and a contrite heart. A broken spirit and a contrite heart. You will not despise. You will not despise. You desire truth in the inward part. A broken spirit and a contrite heart. A broken spirit and a contrite heart. You will not despise. You will not despise. You desire truth in the inward path. A broken spirit and a contrite heart. And I repent, making no excuses. I repent, no one has to blame. And I return to fall in love with Jesus. I bow down on my knees and I repent. I repent, making no excuses. I repent, no one has to blame. And I return to fall in love with. I bow down on my knees and I repent. I regret the hours I have wasted, the pleasures I have tasted that you were never in. And I confess, though your love is here. It doesn't always win me when contesting with my sin. I repent, making no excuses. I repent, no one has to blame. And I return to fall in love with Jesus, I bow down on my knees and I repent. I repent, making no excuses. I repent, no one has to blame. And I return. Fall in love with Jesus. I bow down on my knees and I repent. I lament the idols I have accepted, the commandments I've rejected to pursue my selfish end. And I confess. You to revive me, put selfishness behind me, and take up my cross again. I repent.
hands, making no excuses. I repent, no one has to blame, and I return to fall in love with Jesus. I bow down on my knees, and I repent, I repent, making no excuses, I repent, no one else to blame, and I return to fall in love with Jesus, I bow down on my knees, and I repent, I repent, making no excuses, I repent, no one else to blame, and I return. Jesus, I bow down on my knees, and I repent, and I return to fall in love with Jesus. I bow down on my We are here this morning, not because we can, it's because you can. As we are going to hear your word this morning, Lord Jesus, we pray you speak to everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Is there any one of us that are hardened in sin? Lord, we pray you touch that heart this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. And give us the grace as we are walking in this life. We never think Sin come, temptation comes in our way. Give us all grace to say no in Jesus' name. Amen. And help your children to stand. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm glad to be here again in your presence. From the side of the scripture to the songs and to the choirs. What if you are reading the meaning, the songs they sang this morning, it's enough for us to kneel down to pray. In today's subject, this morning we are looking very important chapter in the scripture of what is happening around us today. Adultery forbidden. That's the topic I gave you this morning. I get on a call a few minutes to midnight when our pastor called me, get ready, tomorrow is your turn. And you don't have to say no to your leader. I pray over it and he prayed for me. I said, God, give me the courage to stand before you. And God will speak to you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Adultery forbidden. Man's greatest problem is sin. And every transgression of the word of God is sin. 
We talk about David. He committed adultery. One thing we know. But there are so many things in the world today that are leading people to hell. Many dwell on one sin. I don't commit adultery. Does it mean I'm clean? I'll go to heaven. Where there is other things in my heart. Oh yes, he commit. He's an adulterous woman. Adulterous woman. He will go to hell. Is that so? Men commit adultery. Women commit adultery. So, adultery is not only for David. Look at the world we are living today. Some people take it as a professional job. They don't even care. They can sleep with anybody and get what they want. The world calls sin enjoyment. But believers, we are crying. We are praying that God will save them in Jesus' name. Let us look Second Samuel chapter 11. And it came to pass. After the year was expired, at a time when kings go to war, that David sent Joab and his servant with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Reba. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in even tide that David arose from off his bed and woke upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof, he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look. That's the problem there. He saw a woman washing. How many of us will be like David, walking? Put it in, you are David, walking. You saw a beautiful woman. When Bible says something is beautiful, this is a beautiful woman. Only Job that said, I made a covenant with my eyes that I may not see a maid. David is not Job. And how many of us will see a woman Beautiful work, washing herself naked and look away. It's impossible. It's only a people who are born again. People who are crucified with Christ. People who, when they see sin, they call sin, sin. If not, most of us, most of people will be peeping through the window. Even though somebody is coming, you do as if all is okay. But your eye is still over there. David saw. What are you looking? What are we thinking every day? In your heart. Not just what I see. But what you thought in your heart. Every thought you have in, in your heart. That is immoral thoughts. They are sin. Ungodly thoughts. They are sinful. David saw. And he couldn't look away. And he continued looking. That put him into trouble. Why we are reading today. Praise the Lord. As David saw, Eve also saw. When you see Genesis 3.16, Eve saw. Eve saw. You continue going to Joshua 7.22. Achan, when he saw a goodly Babylonish garment. He saw your eyes is the one putting you to sin. If you can control your eyes, you'll be able to control your thoughts. When you look, you lost in after what you have seen. This great man had been a great warrior right from his youth. We know about him when he defeated Goliath, the Philistine giant. He maintains consistent victory over Israel's enemy because God was with him. We see this valiant warrior humiliated and prostrate before a hideous enemy, which is flesh. Flesh will put you down if you're not careful, if you're not watching your life. David yielded to demand of his flesh and committed adultery with Bathsheba, Uriah's wife. 
What the Bible told us in Exodus 20, verse 14, that shall not commit adultery. He knew that beforehand. But what came into her? Lost after flesh. Because he's a king. He has the power. Most of us today, we commit sin. You want to hurt somebody. You don't even care. What will that person do? Adultery is not the only sin people commit. There are a lot of sins in the world. Anger is sin. Hatred is sin. Jealousy is sin. Animosity is sin. Now, there is no sin that is greater than another. But remember, adultery is forbidden. Rather than this man go to, on his knees to repent after this ugly incident, you know what he do? He tried to cover up. Is that what is happening today? When you caught in sin, instead of you to own up, you still find a way to defend yourself. Even though it is true, you find a way to lie. It happened to most of us. When things happen, we don't tell the truth. I don't tell the truth. You try to hold it on, hold it on, wasting time. This is what this man trying to do. He tried so many ways to eliminate this woman. He slept with this woman and get her pregnant. And even to cover up, try to bring his wife, his husband to come. And the man was even more innocent than the king of Israel. He refused to go to sleep with his life. Today, there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. Amen? Amen. If only we know that there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. You can see that in Luke 12, 2. There is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. Neither hide that shall not be known. It is better now we know that that sin. Pray with you and God will forgive you. Then you pretending and the death knocks you down. Then there will be no repentance anymore. I pray it's not going to be our Lord in Jesus' name. God is sent Prophet Nathan to open up the can of worms about this king. Today as believers, believers need to learn that the flesh is a deadly monster. Women lost after men. Men lost after women also. It's not just men lost after women. Flesh is a monster that must be constantly tamed to avoid ruining their chances of entering heaven. We must, as Christians, believers, imbibe the principle of self-discipline to avoid suffering similar spiritual fate. You know, that's why Apostle Paul said, I kept under my body and bring it into subjection. Least that by any means when I preached to others, I myself should not be a castaway. How we Christians, we go preaching to people and the heaven we are preaching for, we cannot get into that heaven. We are quick to condemn. We are quick to find sins in somebody. But we don't check our lives, the way we live, the way we behave. We are living as if there is no tomorrow. Most Christians are living as if, as it is today, it's going to continue forever. They're giving time to repent. I will do, I will do. But whose will? Suppose God calls you to death. Beware what you see and how you're looking at them. Put your heart away from it. Like our pastor was saying today, we're getting into the most dangerous time in the history of our nation where you can see, like our, our pastor say, <laughs> you can pluck everybody's eye. Ah, yes, you will see, but it depends what you are looking at. 
Most of the times, accidents that happen on the road, it's not because of careless driving. Because you see some men looking, looking. Before it's too late, ah. And they will try to lie that somebody was on the phone. Try to lie. You parking at the, at the you look at, you parking at the car garage. You see a man standing and staring, looking as if something happened. When you come out from the car, lock your car, look at the face, look at the direction. You look at a woman walking all the all down. Many people are so lost in just looking at a woman. I was in uh, Glenbony this week. Thank God for this message, Pastor. I was in Glenbony this week to renew my, to pay for my car insurance. A man with a laptop was watching a naked woman open there different pictures. Now, even though he stayed there, they call his number, he forget his number. He was there until they, they called his number. He forgot his number. Sin is terrible. When you are in sin, the more you sin now, and you sin in 10 minutes later, you are going down. It's a downward journey. You're going down to hell. He's lost in. If he can do that in the public, what about the type of dirty life that man is living at home? Tomorrow he died. They will gather I say you went to heaven. Many has perished. We are the most of the things happening today. We are the cause of it. That is why we are going to look today. This subject, adultery forbidden, into three subheadings. One, David's temptation, and the fall. Two, what believers must learn from David's fall. Finally, the consequences of attempting to cover up sin. I come back again. One, correction. David's temptation and fall. Point one. Point two, the consequences of attempting to cover up sin. There are consequences. If you cover your sin, your wrongdoings, nobody knows, but God knows. There's a consequences on that. Now, number three point, that's why I say correction. What God expects all sinners to do what God expects all sinners to do. Praise the Lord. I say, church, praise the Lord. If there's anything we talk about today, it's about sin. Very soon, we'll be heading to Kingston for convention. You are going there to expect. You have prepared your heart what you want God to do for you. But God does not answer sin of a prayer of a sinner. You must come clean to God. Before God look down on you. If you are not pure in heart, you cannot see God. If there is sin in you, God will not answer you. So, a few days now, we will be heading to that great place. And I pray, you will not go there and come back empty-handed in Jesus' name. I say, we will not go there and come back empty-handed in Jesus' name. Second Samuel, chapter 11, verse 4. As we read before. And it came to pass. In every man's life, every woman's life, there's a time that it will come to pass. Are you guided on that days, on that time, when David did what he did? Verse 2. And it came to pass in the evening time. The devil knows exactly the time he can strike. Evening time. He didn't come in the morning time. But there are people still around. The devil arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof of he saw a woman washing herself. There is nothing, there is something significant about this period in the history, in the land of Israel. At this time, they go to war. The king must go to war. You don't set back. Conversion is coming now. Many people, are you going? Are you going? As if we are forcing you to go to go great tap your blessing. 
Some people are lacking behind, giving irrelevant excuses. And you are lacking behind. It's not, you, you are not even happy, excited to go. Be careful. A friend might invite you. Oh, your church went to convention. Can you come to our church instead of staying home on Sunday? Be very careful. After the church, you might, oh, can we go to dinner? You are not too, f- you are not too, 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 s- you are not too smart than the devil. He knows how to lure you to sin. That's why you should be watched at all time. David chose to tarry at Jerusalem, and the devil strike him and knock him down. By the grace of God, we all are going to Kingston in Jesus' name. Amen. Rising from the bed at evening time and walking about on the housetop, exposed this great man to a battle that he never prepared. When the children of God are gathered, the devil always roaming around. He's a lion. He was moving around seeking whom he would devour. He met David on his unguided time. And David has no chance to ignore it. How many of us today have seen something, even as I'm talking now, this week, and you think all is all right? You have to pray. And God will forgive you if you repent in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Job 31 1. Job 32. I want you to open the Bible, please. Uh, don't be surprised. I might call you to read. I made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I think of a maid? Why should I think of a maid? Only godly people made covenant with their eyes. You see things, you just look at it, and you don't have any ulterior motives. You don't have to pay attention. You don't have to try to look deep down. You just look away. Until you get to the level of doing that, your eyes will always put you into trouble. Because if you look at First John, op- everybody open First John 2.15. devil uses three things to knock people down. If you can be strong and overcome on this point here, the devil will flee and he will flee from you always in Jesus' name. He told us here, love not the world, neither the things that are in this world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Now look at what the devil uses in chapter in verse 16. He said that for all that is in the world, one, say it, church, the loss of the flesh. Second, the loss of the eyes. And the third one, the pride of life. All these things is not of the Father, but of the world. That is why Eve saw. That is why David saw. That's why Eve looked at the, f- that's why the flesh dropped David down. The pride in man. I have that, I have this, I have that. You thought you, you are up. Others are down. Pride in a man. All those are what devil uses to draw people down. He told Jesus that, come down. I will give you everything. He cannot, he don't have any good thing to offer. Everything belongs to Jesus. And somebody says, come down from there. I will give you everything. He uses bread, fleshly things to tempt Jesus. He said Jesus in the pinnacle to look everywhere. He will give it to him. The proud, proud man and he fell. Jesus conquer. We will conquer in Jesus' name. First Corinthians 7. Open your Bible. First Corinthians 7, 1 to 5. I read. Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife 
unto the husband. Number four, that is why adultery is so rampant in the, in the society today. Number four, when you read the scripture, understand what you are reading, the wife had no power over her body. When there is argument, sisters, you don't have no power over your body. Brothers, but the husband also likewise had no power over his own body. Defraud ye not one another, except it be with consent for a time. Praise the Lord. When there is argument, women, man, be very careful. That was when the devil always stand and watch. If you don't have to get everything. You don't have to. If it doesn't go your way, submit to one another. Don't use anything to defraud one another. You don't know that the devil is knocking at the door. Hey, don't touch me. Okay? If that person don't touch you, there's somebody that wants that person to touch them. How oh dear. Most of the sins, we created it to ourselves. And when it happens, we'll be crying. God, come. God, do this. God, do that. The Bible already said here, defraud ye not one another. Only through consent. And you can't be fasting every day. Even though you're fasting every day, that's okay. But you should not do that. Because the devil is so bad. He's always around. Seeking. He will not see us in Jesus' name. Amen. I say he will not see us in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember the Bible mentioned about Reuben. Reuben committed adultery. Judah committed adultery. In his case, can we open Genesis 38? Judah also committed adultery. Genesis 38. Everybody know the story about Judah, 38, 17 to 19. And he said, I will send thee a flock. And she said, Will thou give me a pledge till thou send it? Praise the Lord. Genesis 38, 17 to 19. 18. And he said, What pledge shall I give thee? And she said, Thy signet. <laughs> you know, and, he, and thy bracelet. And thy staff that is in thy hand. And he gave it her. And came in unto her. And she conceived by him. 19. And she arose and went away and laid by her veil. By her. And put off the garment of her widowhood. And Judah sent the kid by the hand of his friend, Adelimite, to receive his pledge from the woman's hand. But he found not. He found not. 22. And he returned to Judah and said, I cannot find her. And also the men of the place said, There was no harlot in this place. Look at how this man descended so low. Looking for a harlot. And it came to pass after three months that it was told Judah, saying, Tema, your daughter in law, had played the harlot. And now she's with a child by Wodom. And Judah said, Bring her and let her be burnt. <laughs> he didn't know that was his child. You don't know what's happening to our lives today, most of us. Most of us who are so judgmental. Look at your life you are living. Look at what others has done. How are you judging? Are you, have you come out from your own way of lifestyle? Are you covering yourself and judging others? Bring her, let's burn her. How I wish that kind of a judgment, they would turn Judah and burn Judah too. But they covered everything. Samson, because of our time, read Judges 16.15. That great man of God was sleeping on a harlot's lap. Imagine. 
what flesh can do. Judah gave everything he had. What is it not happening in our life society today? Men are doing more to their f- worldly friends and their women. They respect them more. To rest and give them give checks. Buy things for them that you never buy for your own wife at home. Is it not happening today? You respect people at work than your own wife at home. Is it not happening today? Because of flesh. And that flesh, you have it at home. What shall it profit a man who shall gain the whole world and lost his soul? If Judah had known that was his child, he would have not gone so all way long, say, bring her, let's burn her. We're going to burn somebody that you mess her life up. That's why Jesus Christ teaching on adultery revealed Matthew 5.28. Matthew 5.28. Jesus said, Matthew 5.28. I want you to read it yourself. This is the scripture said by our Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew 5.28. I read. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, had committed adultery with her already in his heart. That is true. That is why he said, if your right hand Right eye offend the pluck it out. This is the time, this is the season. You are sitting there with a sister. You cannot concentrate. You're using your elbow and focusing on that sister. You look, look, what are you looking in? What are you looking? That's the problem we have. You see a brother sitting down, you'll be looking, what are you looking? You don't know that you are committed adultery. It's not when the act is done, it's in your heart. Lusting after one another. Even at schools. Look at what's happening in the colleges today. People almost naked come before the professors. How do professor, is there a godly professor? What are you looking at? What is there? What is there? If you follow what is there, it ends you to hell. That's why the Bible says, come out from among them and be you separate. And wait upon your own time. Children, wait upon your own time. You will be going to colleges. You see naked people around in the colleges. Walking on the street, walking in classroom, hanging on the hallways. Look away from them. You are not from the same. You've had the gospel. They are sinners. They will not make heaven except they repent of their sins. We should not join ourselves with them. You look at a woman you lost after her. You already committed adultery. If that is judgment, who will be saved then? No one needs to walk around on the rooftop before being confronted with devil's kind of temptation. Look at what you have today. Your phone. The computer we have. What are you watching? God sees you. God sees everything you do. When Miriam and Aaron talk about Moses because he married a woman from Ethiopian woman. Moses was not there, but God had them. Every secret thing you do, anyhow you open your mouth, loose talking to people, God hears it and God will judge you, except you, re- you repent. Believers can overcome this evil by obtaining what our pastor says here sanctification. You must be sanctified. You must forsake all the appearances of evil. Refrain from gazing at objects. They are nothing in the air. Avoid sinful curiosity and passion. Reading and meditating on the word of God. That's the only way. If you don't have the word of God backing you up, you will fall. You will not fall in Jesus' name. Amen. Believers must learn from David's fall. David, had he been David, is watching. He will not fall. We must be careful on our unguided hour. Diana went on her unguided hour and she was defied. Children sleeping over has defied so many children in the world today. Sleeping with my friends. Mommy, I'm sleeping with my friends. Be careful who are your friends and who you are sleeping with. Diana went in a wrong time. When you go down yourself, Whatever happens to you, Diana was defied. 
brethren, please do not allow your children to sleep with the friends, with unbelievers. Things are happening in the world today. And you yourself, you can only call a sister whenever you know that sister is alone. Sister, how are, how are you? What are you doing today? Mm. God knows your heart. No matter how you pretend to call, to make that call, and a sister is visiting brother that is lonely, go with somebody. Brother always a good brother, helping sister, bye, 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 fixing her house. Uh, be very careful, you too. There should be no place for loose living. Look at how our sisters dress beautiful. Don't lose yourself. People looking at your body and you try to lure them to sin. You know, women do that. When they look at your eyes, they can open your legs. They can draw their sleep down. I, I, I got him today. I got him today. And uh, what she got you is what you know. If you don't repent, you go and suffer eternity forever and ever. We have to be careful. A believer fall can have a terrible consequences of himself and his posterity. Amen? Amen. The best of saints can be defeated after victory. Don't be sure that <laughs> I'm a born again, I'm a pastor in the power life. I think I was a pastor in the power life too. I was a pastor in different life too. Things do happen in life. What happens is that when it happens to you and you come out from it strong and you guide yourself by meditating and studying the word of God, that's the only way you can be saved. Don't think I'm a born again, nothing will happen. Who told you? It's just a woman just to draw her bra down. You go on. You finish you. Only by the grace of God. If not by the grace of God, we are every day there's a step between man and death. Only by the grace of God we are living here today. The backslider should promptly repent instead of covering up sin. If there's any sin in your life today, you'll be struggling how to do it. Miss your pastor. We have a good pastor here. All pastors are good. Talk to them. It's good that your sin will be exposed and they pray for you. Then you that sin should go after you to the judgment. Anything you have to do, you have offended one another. You have talked on somebody's behind. You have degrading somebody, ridiculed somebody. It's time to make peace with God. There's no another second chance. God still restore those who sincerely believe. He will do that in Jesus' name. What are the consequences? What are the consequences? Proverbs 28, 23. What are the consequences? Proverbs 28, 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whosoever confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Praise the Lord. Ezekiel 33. Ezekiel 33, 12 and 13. When I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trusts to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered, but for his iniquity that he had committed, he shall die of it. Again, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, if he turn from his sin, and do that which is lawful and right. That person will live. Repentance is what God expects from every one of us. First John 1 8. First John. First John 1 8. 1 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, confession is the most thing if you want to make heaven. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all our righteousness. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. When this woman conceived, 
with child. David sent Nathan. And Nathan, being a prophet of God, came, telling David, like we studied today inside the scripture, David condemned that fellow. Is it not what we are doing today? Now, the most important thing here we should learn is that David did everything to cover up sin. That was his own time. My brothers, my sisters, if there's any sin in your life, if there's any sin in your life, you don't know how to do it. As I said earlier, meet the leader you trust. They will help you to come out from it. But if you keep it because you're a choir, because you're a pastor, because you're a good member of the church, if I say that, my name will be go all over the place. They would ask me to step down. <laughs> we used to step down too. So that the devil will carry the whole shame. What shame will you have than one Christ was crucified on the cross of Calvary? He carried all our shame. Because of positions you might have, you cannot give up. You cannot confess of your sins. And God will forgive you. It is better to suffer it now so you can make heaven later on than to hold it with you and hold your position. But one thing I'm assuring you this morning, on the last day, we will know those who are on the, God, on the Lord's side. Because the judgment day is coming and everyone will appear before him all the secret deeds of a man shall be judged. David did something that does not make sense. He committed sin. He pregnanted a woman. He was praying for the child to live. That showed us yesterday we had fasting and prayer and fasting here. If you have sin in your life, or you can fast or you can fast. You can come to fast and three. You can fast 24 hours 7. Without genuine repentance in your heart. God will not forgive you. God will not answer your prayer. People are just coming to church, doing church activities. But their lives are full of sin. They are impure. They are immoral people. See them out there, you can tell. They don't live a godly life. But God knows you. If Pastor Chad didn't see you, God sees you. If Pastor Adada didn't see you, God sees you. If Pastor Kayo didn't see you, all our pastors, Pastor Mara, Pastor Ladele, God sees you. And we pastors also, we should watch our life, whether we are living in Christ, not to stand and preach. Preach, preach, preach. And our life, we have a questionable character in our own life. That's why the Bible says, examine yourself. Examine your life every day to see whether you are in Christ Jesus. There are consequences. When sinners attempt to cover up sin, more sins are committed. Look at the life of David. He killed. Murder. Covetousness. Hypocrisy. And he cons criminal conspiracy to a sin of adultery. He killed somebody. You are sitting here this morning Brothers and sisters, you have anything against anybody. You never let go. Always remember what somebody did to you. Bible said you are a murderer. You hate your brother. You hate your sister. You hate your fellow believer. Bible call you a murderer. And this murderer, no murderer can see the kingdom of God. So that is why it's good this morning after this message if you had any urge against somebody, go and reconcile and let go. Don't remember it anymore. If you know you will make the kingdom of God. Enough of pretending has come and it is ending this morning. Amen? Amen. I can't hear only the men. Amen? Amen? We should try to forgive one another and move forward. We should let love reign in our society, in our midst. We should try to live a holy life. The scripture says, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Amen? Because God is holy and just in his judgment. Believers should learn to accept responsibility for their conduct. 
You do something, your wife telling you something, you are the man of the house, you're yelling and screaming. You are the woman of the house, you're yelling and screaming. Well, that is not right. You must accept that responsibility. Correct that error and repent promptly. This is because every unpardoned sin, hidden or open, shall be judged. It's a matter of time. For God shall bring every walk into judgment with every secret sin, whether it be good or whether it be evil. You can see that in 2 Corinthians 5.10. That is, you remember what our, they sang this morning. You, you don't have to, you have to repent your sins. There's no excuse to do that. You committed that sin. You know yourself. You have to kneel down, ask for forgiveness. If you think you cannot, a day is coming when there will be no time for you to repent. Finally, what God expects all sinners to do. When a preacher commits sin, he's a sinner. When a member commits sin, that member is a sinner. Nobody's above sin. But there's something God expects you to do when that act is committed. First John 2. Open your Bible or I will call you if you don't open your Bible. First John 2. 1 and 2. I mean, 1 John 2, 1 and 2. My little children, these things write unto you that you sin not. Amen? It's only the pastor I'm hearing. The, the, the mean is low. I said, my little children, that's what Bible call us, little children, these things write unto you that you sin not. Amen? That's correct. And if any man sin, because there will be sin. There will be offenses. If any man sin, we have an added forget with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ourselves. For not us only, but also for the sin of the whole world. When you see somebody committed sin, even though that man is here, that person is your right hand. Go straight and talk it. Preach it. Don't condone it. If you don't want to feed you, you can starve. When you starve godly and die, you go to heaven. Do not cover sin. Even if it's your best friend, do not cover sin. Because the sin you covered, God will judge you too. Why must I be judged with somebody's sin? That's ignorant, lack, the ignorance of what people do. Oh, it's my body, body. That's okay. No. That's what scripture said. Rebuke them openly. So that others will learn. Do not cover sin for your husband. Do not cover sin for your wives. Do not cover for your children. Do not cover for fellow pastors. When you see a sin, talk about it, stand upon it, call sin, sin. If they don't want to give you anything, fine. Wherever you go, let people see Christ in you. Amen? Amen. Stand on the truth. God will always punish and confess sin. No matter the pedigree of the sinner. Whether you tall or like this. God has no respect of persons. He will judge a sinner. Every secret eventually leaves open scares. A sinner is walking on the street every day with open scares all over. Only God sees that open scares. He don't see that sin himself. He has matured. He can step on any, anybody's toe. He can go and live a secret life, a hidden secret life out there. Sunday you come to church. You are a brother, you are a sister. God will judge Every secret deed in Jesus' name. God expects all backsliders to repent. If you have committed sin, you have done something that is wrong, it is time to repent. Call upon your God. Kneel down. Cry on it. God will bless you. That's why he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. That is when the blessings will come. You cannot be living in sin and expect the blessings of God. You might get it by your own hard working, struggling all the time. You think you are doing well. No, you are not. God is giving you some chances to repent of your sin. 
Anywhere you go, we should not mingle with people who are sinful. It's all over the place today. God will help us in Jesus' name. God will help us in Jesus' name. Remember what David did. Remember what David did. Remember, it's not only David alone. It's, it's so rampant among us today. And you know what causes all this immorality among married people? Distance. You can't look a job where it's around your wife. You're looking at a job that you're far away from your wife. And you go there by yourself. You say, I'm a Christian. Be very careful. Separation. Can you, will you be able to stand? Even though you didn't commit the act, the urge is always there. It's always there. With a sister, oh God, forgive me, I'm almost lost. How often will God forgive us? We have to be watchful over one another. Be close to one another. That's the only way marriage can stand. You don't know what your spouse is doing wherever they are. <laughs> I trust him. When he comes back or he, she comes back, she'll be preaching the gospel. Uh, who knows? I'm not saying that living apart will make somebody commit sin. But it only takes Joseph by the grace of God in his life to escape sin. Sin is deadly. It's immoral. It will lead us to hell if we don't repent about it. We should treat one another with respect. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. If we do this. If only we can do this this morning. To kneel down to pray. To look at our life. Think where we started and where we are now. If anything had happened, are we qualified to stand before him? Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart today. Sing it, sing it. Try me, O oh Lord. No, my God. See if there be some wicked way in me. Sing it, sing it. From every sin and set me free. I want everyone to be in the mood of prayer. Sing that song. Be in the mood of prayer. This might be your last time on earth. Christ might come in the next second. You got to get yourself clean before standing before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. This is not a time of playing. You got to search yourself. The judgment day is coming. You can behave, act how you can act right now. Search me, oh God. Sing it. step by step from the time we had inside the scriptures the choir ministrations and the message pointing out in the same direction 
Adultery is killing the church. Quietly or overtly. Adultery is destroying men of God. Quietly or overtly. God is giving this our church a chance for us to be set in the right direction. And as the pastor said, it may not be the act itself, but we know what it is. We're going to start today and really examine ourselves. We have a few minutes, that's why I'm doing this. A man of God perhaps he yielded this few minutes for us. Individually examine yourself. You might say, by the grace of God, I'm okay. Okay. Just, 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 just for, just for the sake of this moment. You say, God, just, maybe I don't know. So that when I go out there, the consciousness of the message of today, adultery in any way forbidden. Adultery in any manner forbidden. Adultery in any, in any, in any, in any shape forbidden. Maybe in our thought, in our association. That sister you like talking to, whatever, just for no, for just to talk and to mingle. That is the subtle adultery. That brother you like to mingle, that is the subtle adultery. There's nothing wrong with liking somebody, don't get me wrong. But you know when lust is beginning to come in. When you are setting somewhere, the devil did not do what he did suddenly. It was from the heart. Say, God, search my heart today. Cleanse my heart today. Purify my heart today. Sanctify my heart, my soul, my spirit. Or that when I go out there, anywhere I go, whatever I do, your spirit will bear me witness. And I'm a child of God. I'm waiting for the rapture. I'm ready for the rapture. That's the essence of all these messages. We're not going to pass any exam on adultery. The exam itself is a pleasing God. Say, God, search my heart today. Expose me. It's between me and you. I don't care. What, what, no man has even seen my heart right now, but you see my heart. That our heart will be purified. After it's purified, sanctified. Sanctified, renewed to do the will of God. That no matter what, by the grace of God, we will pass the test. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we bless you because you are not, you are not give, going to give us an excuse in this church. You are not going to give us any excuse. No Supreme Court will stand that day. No big lawyer will stand. And that's why you've given us your word today. For us to really, really, really examine our hearts, our desires, our motivations. Whatever we do with our eyes, with our ears, with our emotions, everything before you. We bring ourselves before the cross as a church. Adultery is forbidden in Jesus' name. In any shape, in any manner, in any form. We renounce in Jesus' name. Many of us who have prayed about sanctification. But the men of God have told us again the essence of the sanctification from the heart. Inside, inside. When we are sanctified indeed... Sin cannot have dominion over us. It cannot even enter. There's a barrier that's placed against it. Father, as many of us as have not been genuinely sanctified, sometimes it may take some time. You are God. You sanctify, you fill with the Holy Spirit, you save at your own time. But we make ourselves available, Father. Visit us in Jesus' name. Amen. Genuine sanctification that will flee from sin. Give it to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Purify our church, O God. Let us be a standard. Let us challenge the world. Let us challenge the unbelievers. Uh, that holiness is not impossible. Yes, by the flesh it's impossible, but with God shall nothing be impossible. So we stand upon your word today. Father, make us holy. Amen. Make us pure. Renew us. So that our church will shine the light. Individually will shine the light. And your name will be praised. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we stand and share the grace and fellowship, please?